What's up guys, Mr. Holton here, and today I want to talk about an article that was released back in September that had some juicy hints and details about God of War Ragnarok. And I'm just gonna get right into it because this article or interview right here gives a couple of hints about where the story might be going. And it feels like it's pushing in the direction of a certain God of War theory that has been floating around for a while now. So Games Radar Plus, or Play Magazine, had this interview with Eric Williams, who, well, if you don't know, he's the producer for God of War Ragnarok. So during their interview with Eric, Games Radar asked a couple of questions of where Atreus and Kratos' relationship may be going in Ragnarok. And this is what he said. There's the internal struggle with Kratos. He made a lot of ground up with Atreus and released those bonds at the end and walked up there and released the ashes. But at that moment, the thing that a lot of people miss is that he also gets gut-punched when he finds out that his wife didn't tell him everything. This person that he loved, that he opened his whole life to, also held a secret from him. He has to hold that, and he has to still be there for his son. Which, to me, sounds like Kratos feels really betrayed by Faye, by the fact that she kept this very important secret from him. Or at least he was just hurt that she wasn't entirely truthful of who she was and who Atreus was. So going forward, it sounds like we will see Kratos carrying this heavy burden where he thought that he could trust the love of his life. And maybe this will factor into the story somehow. Eric actually adds more hints to this that Atreus and Kratos' relationship will be more strained this time around as they talk about how Atreus has grown into a young man already. Staying true to what we did last time, it's keeping the father-son relationship moving. It doesn't just stop like, oh, we finished this for mom, we're good. No, like, there's a lot more that goes on in life and it continues moving forward. So yeah, even if we got a pretty nice and heartfelt ending to God of War, this doesn't mean that Kratos and Atreus won't have conflicts with each other. And hey, is it just me, or is this starting to sound suspiciously like that one theory about Atreus splitting off from Kratos and doing his own thing? Anyway, Eric continues with this. Last time, it was one kid with a lot of adults talking. This is like, well, there are some different perspectives. We're gonna see it from a kid's perspective in the world, figuring things out that they thought were black and white, or maybe much more grey, and a lot more family dynamics. Now this one is really interesting. The fact that Eric says that we'll see it from Atreus' perspective. Now is this just a figure of speech or is he being literal? Because it sounds like not only will the game probably center around Loki, but maybe we're getting prepared for something that's yet to come. Eric and GamesRadar keep talking about how Sunny Suljic, Atreus' actor, grew so fast during the development of the game and that Santa Monica wanted to create a separation from the cute little kid we saw in the last game, and that the weight on Atreus' shoulders are even heavier this time around. And then Games Radar asked if we're gonna see more combat stuff regarding Atreus, which we already know from the trailer, but anyway, here's what he says. I will say this. He is his father's son. That almost sounds like we're gonna get a much more of a Spartan-type warrior kind of thing with Atreus this time around. Maybe some more melee attacks? Maybe he gets to swing the Leviathan axe around? Now, of course, I forgot to mention that the legendary Cory Barlog was also participating in this interview. Cory, of course, being Cory, took over for a bit and joked around and even referenced the show What We Do in the Shadows. But then, Cory said this. In order to understand the timeline we were in for the last game, we sort of projected out, similar to the way that when meteorologists starts to project out beyond the few hours around the time that they're projecting, it gets fuzzier and fuzzier and fuzzier, and allows you to sort of just say what we're trying to hit is this general target. So basically Santa Monica had an average, you know, idea of where they wanted the story to go. They've been just tossing ideas around, you know, left and right, and that's what kind of happened with the uh, Loki name drop at the end of God of War 2018, because they were just kicking ideas around and if it makes sense for the story, 
they're gonna add it. And this is because the team really wants to like kick us in the guts when these moments really do happen in order for us to feel really emotional throughout the game. And man, am I excited to get absolutely demolished emotionally when this game finally does come out. All right, guys, so what do you gather from this? Did you also get that hunch at the start of the video that maybe Atreus and Kratos' relationship is going to change? Like, change a lot? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, have a great day, guys. Mr. Holton, signing out.